you didn't know, your ass better call somebody. Hey guys, so you want to know a little bit about the age of comics, right? When they say, oh, the golden age, the bronze age, the silver age, the modern age, what are we talking about here? Let me give you a little breakdown. So it started out in the Victorian age, 1842 to 1897. And this was uh, satirical magazines only for the well-off. And the major publication at this time uh, was kind of like a hidden thing. It was a, actually, these guy, this guy wrote these papers, uh, but, to, but to get it out to the people without, you know, uh, police and stuff seeing it, he called it The Adventures of Mr. Obadiah Old Buck. Uh, never read any of it. <laughs> I'll see if I can find some pictures of it. Uh, but that's that's that one and then from there we went into the platinum age and this is when uh, the, it became the platinum age because now uh, the printing press and all that stuff is more available to the more common folks there's newspapers so this is 1897 to 1938 so this is uh, the funnies in the newspapers era right so the upside downs of the old man Muffaroo and little lady lovekins is the, the major fun, <laughs> funny uh, comic strips uh, of the time that I found for uh, for this era. The next era is the Golden Age. So, the Golden Age is 1938 through 1955. And this is when the superhero was born, guys. This is Action Comics 1, first appearance of Superman. Detective Comics 27, first appearance of Batman. Captain America Comics 1, Cap, first appearance of Captain America. All-Star Comics, number eight, first appearance of Wonder Woman. Some stuff that happened here in this, um, to, to get us out of the golden age of comics. In 1954, the Comics Code Authority was created. And this was created because uh, this doctor, Frederick Wortham, he decided to write this book called Seduc Seduction of the Innocent. And he claimed in there that, you know, all these comic creators like EC Comics and um, all these people doing these horror comics and, you know, even, you know, main publishers were doing horror comics and uh, crime comics and war comics. And he, he was claiming that uh, the kids reading this are getting inspired by these comics to go out and do heinous things. Um, you know that that you know you've seen that come back around. You know that with with um, the school shootings and everything, they that's you know that's that's happened in our time. And uh, so they had to do something to appease uh, appease you know legislation or regulation to kind of monitor what was going on in the comics. You know, like how we used to. I remember on TV, we didn't ever have the uh, when the TV came on. Up here in the corner, we didn't have, you know, TV PG or TV R or whatever. You know, we didn't have that stuff on the on the TV. So that, that came out, you know. And then video games, too, had uh, the ratings system um, attached to them after, like, the school shootings and, you know, you know, violent video games made me do it and all that stuff. That, that all, you know, it's kind of the same thing here that happened, right? Uh, so all that stuff contributed to, um, you know, the kind of the downfall and, you know, superheroes were, were kind of going away, you know, had been, you know, 20 years or whatever. And, and people were, were more interested in Westerns and war and, and crime and, uh, horror, uh, you know, other comics types, right? Not so much superheroes. They wanted to know stories about. You know other things that were happening like Zorro and stuff. I don't know if Zorro is one of them, but you know that's just a whatever. So, Silver Age rolls around, right? That's from 1956 to 1972, and this you know everything comes back around, right? Everything comes back around. So now we're reintroducing uh, superheroes because you know over those 20 years, as you know, people were finding. You know, maybe we did like superheroes more. You know, I'm kind of tired of these westerns now. I'm kind of, you know, I'm tired of the war stuff. Let's get back into uh, superheroes. And this is when Detective Comics 225 Martian Manhunter came out. 
All right, the first appearance of Martian Manhunter came out. Fantastic Four number one. Uh, this is the first appearance of Fantastic Four. Amazing Fantasy 15. First appearance of Spider Man. So this is, you know, this is like Stan Lee, Jack Kirby. This is the the heyday. This is what I'd really call it, the golden age. Uh, I know that, you know, the golden age, but this this to me is when all the you know all the big time people came out. Really, the golden age for me would probably be uh, the end of the Bronze Age or this modern age right now. To me, that's 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 my golden age. So you also had uh, Journey into Mystery 83, uh, the first appearance of Thor. I actually had a chance to buy this comic, but it was expensive. I can't remember how much it was. It's like 1300 bucks, and it was like a 2.0 grade. If you watch my grading video, you know what a 2.0 is. Uh, so it wasn't that great. It wasn't graded, but that's just what the, the shop had put on it from, from looking at it. I'll see if I can find a picture of it in my, from my old phone and uh, see if I can put it up here. Uh, let's see here. And uh, Hulk number one. This is when uh, the Incredible Hulk uh, was was defined. So what happened here to go from Silver Age to Bronze Age? It, it um, many people say maybe it was in 1970 when the Green Lantern uh, was given to Danny uh, Denny O'Neill and Neil Adams, right? So what they did to the Green Lantern, they they put him with the Green Arrow, so it's Green Lantern, Green Arrow. And then they, they made uh, the Green um, Lantern more worldly. You know, he gets tired and run down. And they start putting in um, stuff that, you know, superheroes wouldn't nor ordinarily deal with. Like Speedy. Um, be like, I think that's Green Arrow's sidekick. Don't quote me on that. I'm not, I'm not sure. But I know, I know Speedy is in the comics, but I don't know how he pertains to Green Arrow. I think it's his sidekick anyways. He gets wrapped up with drugs and stuff like that. And that's a major issue. Um, that was Green Arrow '85, or Green Green Lantern, Green Arrow '85, and that's a that's a award-winning issue because it you know it's the first. I think is the first time like drug abuse had been you know talked about in in uh, in comics, so this sparked a new era, right? And then if if that if that wasn't it, you know, three la years later. Uh, they kill off Gwen Stacy uh, in Amazing Spider-Man 121. So, so now, you know, Peter Parker, his his girlfriend, Gwen Stacy, I mean, is gone. I think that's who it is. I, I always second guess myself when I'm on camera. But, uh, yeah, like, so now we're, we're going down a, you know, a, a grimier, a grimier road. So it's not the way it was, in, you know. All, all the comics before this so okay we need to we're gonna call a different age now so now we're in a bronze age right 1973 to 1985 so uh, what happened here so the things above that I told you about and then also uh, you know just a lot of the pioneers were retiring right or they were going into management management roles they were letting the young bucks um, you know the young bulls uh, get a piece of the action right so, and then and some other stuff happened here too. Like comics weren't, you know, uh, they were kind of becoming a niche, right? Because comic shops were opening up. Remember how, you know, uh, the newsstands uh, were becoming more a thing of the past. Like mo most comic people were, uh, readers were going now to comic shops where they can, you know, be around other people that, that love the thing that they love and, and they don't have to go to Rite Aid or CVS to get their comics uh, from the spinner. Now they have all the comics that they could ever want in one, in one place. And um, with the niche comes a higher price. So the comic prices went up. And, uh, you know, you go look around anywhere now. You can't find a place that, I mean, Walmart's just now starting to sell uh, comics again. But they're... You know, they order probably 10 comics a store, 12 comics a store, and they're Walmart um, exclusives, right? They're trying to test the waters again, but you just can't, um, you can't compete with the, the comic shop. And another thing that's happened here is that in uh, 1971, the Comics Code Authority uh, 
was revised. So uh, horror comics came back and uh, they were able to do more stuff in horror comics. So this is another point for the new age. Uh, they started Ghost Rider and Swamp Thing and, uh, you know, all those different things. So in this era, we have uh, Conan the Barbarian 1, first appearance of Conan. Um, Superman's pal Jimmy Olsen 134, which is uh, Dark Side. I like to call this guy Dark Seed because his name is uh, spelled S-E-I-D. If you watch the new uh, Justice League cut that just came out on HBO Max, you get to see what Dark uh, Side looks like. Mr. Miracle number one, first appearance of Mr. Miracle. House of Secrets 92, this is the first appearance of Swamp Thing. Amazing Spider-Man 101, Morbius the Living Vampire. So Morbius the Living Vampire came about because in the Comics Code Authority, the reason he's called Living Vampire, the Comics Code Authority said we cannot show any undead things in comics anymore. So they're like, okay, we'll make a vampire, but we'll say he's a living vampire. They got around it. So this uh, pretty much ended because the comic industry wanted this this age to end, really. And they did that by Secret Wars uh, for Marvel and Crisis of Infinite Earths for DC. So that was really a, like a big changing point when, uh, you know, characters died and other characters came back. And I think this is where uh, the Flash died and he, he wasn't seen for like 20 years and, and in a major role in a comic again. So big things happened right here. And then also the Watchmen, uh, was, well, the Watchmen comic came out. Um, and then you had the Dark Knight, uh, Batman the Dark Knight Returns by Frank Miller. And you get into these more adult, uh, grungy, gritty comic types. So they were just ready for a new, you know, a new beginning, right? So in walks the modern age. And that's 1986 to present. That's, this is my golden area, right? You got, uh, and I think it's just, you know, it's the age that I live in, that I, I was born in. I mean, this is, you know, a year, you know, I was, this is the year I was, you know, I was born in 85. So I've been this, this whole age has been me. Everything I've known really has came from this era. So you got the Amazing Spider-Man 361 for Carnage. You got Spawn number one for Spawn. Superman and Man of Steel 18 for Doomsday, uh, Web of Spider-Man 118 for the Scarlet Spider, Inhumans 5 for Black Widow. You just got tons of awesome stuff coming out right now. And not to mention the stuff that's not even superheroes like uh, Chew and um, Something's Killing the Children and Ha Ha and Ice Cream Man and Jeez uh, Preacher, uh, Sandman all of this awesome stuff coming out um and i think it's only gonna get better guys it's only gonna get better the writing is there the interest is there the art is definitely that man it's just so good right now this is really the golden age for me i mean it, um i understand the golden age was the golden age because that's where everything happened you know started but man this is the age for me so if you like these videos let me know um i'll continue to inform you about stuff that has to do with comics. Um, if not, comic issues will always be there for you. So, hope you guys liked the video. Uh, have a good day. See ya.